All right, we are back for another painting video, and today we are painting the Neuro Tyrant from the Leviathan box set. We're going to get right into it. I'm going to start with Mortarian Grime. And uh, unlike some of the other Tyranid models in this box set, this guy doesn't really have a lot of skin uh, on the main part of him here. You've got armor, this brain thing, and then some more armor and brains and stuff on the back here. So this color is really just going to be on all of the underneath parts. And I'm going to cheat a little bit on this paint job. Whereas normally, um, like, all this is armor panel, which is going to be purple in my paint scheme. And this is the reverse side of that, and so really that should be purple too. But uh, the purple is much more of a pain to get smooth and to look nice. So I'm going to cheat and use this Mortarian Grime and just do it on the inside. And, you know, technically this armor will now be one color on one side and a different color on the other side. But I don't think anyone will notice or care. And so I'm going to do it that way. And with this Mortarian Grime, I can just slap it on. It's much thinner uh, than the Luxion Purple we're going to use. So I can just slap it on there get coverage, and especially since on this guy, no one is probably going to be looking at down here. They're going to be looking at this giant brain and armor contraption we've got here. So as long as we make the top look nice, no one will be looking down here, and we can get away with taking a shortcut on this underbelly here. So I'm going to finish this up, make sure to get all the stuff in here, the tentacles in the teeth, Stuff like that. Um, none of this up here should be needing to be this color, but if it does, I'll, uh, I'll get that as well. And then we'll come back once this is all dry and do the next step. All right, we are back, and our Mortarian Grime is all nice and dry. Um, I did end up deciding to paint this part here in that color, and then these, uh, like, I don't know, this kind of looks like a giant psychic hood sort of thing. All that I decided to paint in... Uh, in Mortarian Grime as well. So now moving on to our armor color. We're going to use Luxion Purple for this. And I'm going to get my brush pretty wet here so the purple goes on smoothly. I'm just going to start in the corner here and work my way up. And I'm just being careful to make sure the purple doesn't pool too heavily in any spots and that it has good coverage. And I am gonna leave some of the armor not purple. Um, so like this part right here, this is gonna be blue. And then there's a little part on the back of him that's also gonna be blue. But just making sure, I'm gonna keep my brush pretty wet when I'm applying this purple. So it's a strong color and so it will have a tendency to create tide marks if you're not careful. So I'm just gonna go over it over this once first and get in all these nooks and crannies on the main armor panel here and then as soon as I'm done okay so then I'm gonna rinse my brush off keeping it damp but not wet I'm just gonna come back and pull off any spots where the paint is just a little too deep so maybe in there right in here just pulling it back a little bit not going crazy but just enough that it doesn't sit in a so they're not there aren't puddles of this drying just in the recesses so hopefully you can see that put my brush there and it's soaking back up some of the excess paint and then just smooth it back out with the brush. So I am going to do the same process on all the rest of the armor back here, and then we will come back and do the next step. All right, we are back, and we're gonna move on to Magma Droth Flame now. We're gonna use that for the brains of this guy. I originally chose this color just because it uh, contrasts well with the, uh, the purple and the blue. But uh, I also think that it might be kind of a 
a unique color for brains on these guys. Um, I think a lot of people will probably do them in blue. Just because that's what the box art does. And it blue is kind of the, the default color in Warhammer for psychic stuff. So I think orange will be uh, will be pretty cool. So I'm just going to get the big parts of the brain here, this side, and I'll obviously get the other side. And then all the parts in here. Being careful because this color will show up through the blue we're going to do on this bit of armor. So we just want to be careful. And then we're going to get this stuff in here underneath this uh the back part of the armor just get it all up in there make sure we go all the way to the edge being careful not to get it on any of the other armor panels and i think i'm gonna double check but i think that is oh nope nope we got these here also He's got a lot of brains, this guy. He is the, uh, he's a walking hive mind all of his own. Or I guess he doesn't walk. He's a floating hive mind all of his own. And then he's got his two little buddies that go with him. That also have brains on them. In any event, uh, I'll have to tidy that up in a second with some white paint. So that we can put our blue down. But for now, I am going to do the other side of him. All this and in there. And then once that's all dry, we'll come back and do the blue. All right, now that our orange is all nice and dry, we're going to move on to the blue. And this is going to be for all the armor panels that we didn't paint in purple. Oh, and we're going to use Frost Heart for this. And same as the purple, I'm going to get my brush a little bit wet. And I'll just start in the middle here. You just drag it to all the the corners of this armor and then if it's a little bit too thick here just pull it back off just like that there we go and then we'll do it to the other side just being careful to keep it off the orange and the white. There we go. And then just finish out the crest here. I think I'm also going to do this thing in blue as well. Whatever that little line of armor at the top is. You also want to be careful when you're working on something like this that has sharp edges that your brush is moving over towards the rest of your model. You want to make sure to not move your model or your uh, brush too quickly along those because it will flick little droplets of the paint and they'll go all over your paint job and that will be terrible. You can sometimes get away with it depending on what color you're using, but uh, for this blue like this it will ruin your paint job so i'm going to go ahead and do the rest of this here i'm getting a i'm going to get this line here i'm going to get all this back here and then i'm just going to go in and make sure i get all the i have all the edges done along here and such and once this is all dry we will come back and start in on the first of our layer paint all right, we are back, and it's time for our next color, which is going to be Fire Slayer Flesh. This is going to be for all the, uh, the squishy bits on the inside of these Tyranids. So I'm going to start off by getting the fuzz off my paintbrush. And then I'm going to go in here and get all this stuff around the mouth and the tentacles or mandibles or whatever these are. I'm just going to get all of this at once here. 
go. Then I'm going to get in here between the blue and the brain. Swipe that off the purple. Get in there. And then the other side as well. And then in these little, I'm not sure if they're eyes or what they are on this thing, but in these holes right here. And then, let's see where else. Oh yeah, these, uh, these like toxin sacs or whatever they are down at the bottom of the tentacles. These are going to be this color. And that matches the, uh, I painted the little guys that come with this guy already. And I did this color on them, so. In order to match them, I will do this too. And I'll do the other one, of course. And then, is there anything else that needs to be this color? I don't think so. Oh yeah, I'm going to get kind of the, the inlaid detail here. And then all these holes that go down the side of him. I'm going to just go around them. And here on this side as well. And I think that's it. Um, between colors, I'll look around and make sure I didn't skip anything. I know I have to get the back of the mouth and stuff still. Um, but yeah, I'll go around and make sure I didn't miss anything that needs to be this color. And if I find anything, I will tell you what I did when I come back. But I'm going to let this dry. And then we will come back and do our first non-contrast color. Alrighty, we're going to move on to the black now. And for that, we're going to use black pudding. Kind of rubbed off there, but it is black pudding from the D&D Prismatic paint line. And I've already gotten some out on our palette here. So this is just going to be for all the claws, talons, fangs, anything, anything pointy really, made of bone or whatever it might be made of. That's what this is, that's what this color is for. Um, and then, in addition to that, I'm trying to get these claws. There are these things on his back that are present on several of the Leviathan models that look kind of like they're creatures, like little face hugger kind of things that are buried in his skin. These right here, I'm not 100% sure what they are, um, and but these are going to be black as well. On the uh, on the neuro gaunts, it really looks like they are like little kind of spider things or something that are attached to their backs. Here, they don't look as much like creatures, but it's the same sort of detail, so I'm going to paint it the same way. Oh, and I forgot to get the toxin sacks on the other thing there. I'll do that between colors. Um, that should have been our Fire Slayer flesh. But for now, we'll just get the, these parts in black. And I'm noticing right here that should be purple down there. I'm just missing all sorts of things. Well, in the final product, those will all be done. And I suppose if you've seen the thumbnail, which if you have got here somehow without seeing the thumbnail, I have questions. Um, they will have all been done by then. So I'm just going to finish up and get all the spiky parts here. Basically anything that can be used as a weapon is going to be this flat black color. Just a couple more here in the front. Um, not his teeth, though. I decided early on when I started painting these guys that I wasn't going to do black teeth. It maybe would have made sense to do black teeth, but... I decided against it. I think the kind of bone off-white color that we do them makes them stick out a little bit more. But yeah, I will uh, make sure I've got all the claws and stuff that I need to get. Uh, I will wait for that paint to dry. And then we will come back and do the next step. 
All right, we are back and we're ready for our second layer paint. We're going to use Banshee White from the D&D Prismatic Paint line again. And we are just going to paint this onto all the folds of the brain here. So I'm just going to pick a spot and start going. And we're painting them white because we're going to come back in and go over them with a contrast paint. Um, and you could, if you wanted, just paint these a color. Um, instead of doing white and then a contrast paint. Uh, I'm doing it this way, though, just because I think it unifies the finish a little bit more to have a contrast paint be on the top of the layer paint. Um, but if you wanted to save the time, you absolutely could just come in and paint these a different color. Um, you could also just not paint these a color at all and just leave them your first contrast paint, and that would be just fine. But I'm going to go through and just paint all the folds here. So I've got this to do. Obviously this side, that, these, these. It's going to be a while. But uh, yeah, once I get all these painted in and this is completely dry, we will come back and add the contrast paint on top of it. Alrighty, so while our white is drying, we're just going to do a really quick step. We're going to use some myconid spore here. And we're just going to paint the teeth in with this color. Get a little bit out on the palette. And then just come in, pick out the individual teeth here, leaving a little bit of that brown in between each one. And just a little bit more over here. On this side. All right, so there's the teeth done. And now we can roll straight into the yellow for the brain. And that's, we're going to use Bad Moon Yellow for this. And I'm just going to get my brush a little bit wet. And then we're just going to put it all over the brain here. And we're just going to make sure. That once we put it on, we pull it back off enough so that the orange still shows through. So I'm putting it on a little bit heavy at first, just to get good coverage. Make sure all the white is completely covered. And then I'll just come back in and pull it off so that we expose the orange. And... It will stain the white enough that coming back in and pulling it off will not pull it off the white areas, but it will pull it back off the orange areas. There we go. Looks about good. A little bit more right there. And I think we're good. So I will do that same process on the rest of the brains, and then we'll come back and do the next step. Alrighty, our yellow is all done and nice and dry. And now we're going to move on to highlighting our purple. And for that, we're going to use Fairy Dragon Wings from the D&D Prismatic Paint line. Let me get some of this out on a palette. Then we're going to take a small brush, and we're just going to get the edges of each one of these armor panels here. We're just gonna draw lines. So I'll start with this one. They can be the same size, different sizes, doesn't really matter. Just drawing the lines out along the edges of the armor panels. This is a pretty common thing on Tyranid armor panels. And uh, don't mess with success, I suppose, so I'm doing it on mine. And it's a, it's a lot easier than edge highlighting, which is another thing you can do on the edge of all these armor panels. But uh, just drawing these lines, I think, way easier. And it still gets you a cool result. So I'll come over to this side now. And I'm just kind of randomly drawing these. I'm not really, I'm not really uh, going in any set pattern. I'm just drawing them out. Wherever they end up, they end up. Some of them are thicker, some of them are thinner. It's whatever. 
whatever floats your boat. So I'm just going to do this over the rest of the miniature here. And then once that's all done, we will come back and do the same thing to the blue. Alrighty, we are back and our purple hash marks are all done. So now we're going to move on to the blue. We're going to use Sea Hag Blue for this. We're going to do the exact same thing we just did, but on the blue armor. So again, skinny brush. Get a little bit on the end of our bristles here. And then just find an armor panel and draw some lines. Um, really, the hardest part about this is deciding which edge you're going to use for your lines. Um, I've been trying to use the the overlapping edge um, on my guys. So, like, where this armor panel overlaps onto this one. I've been using those. But you could do the, the inside edge if you wanted. It's kind of up to you, to be honest. You could also do both sides of each armor panel if you really wanted to get crazy. But uh, I think this looks the best to me. So I will finish this up here. I will also get all the armor panels on the back that are in blue. For those, I will, since they're kind of like spikes, I'll just highlight up on the tops here. Um, but then once all that is dry, we'll come back, do a couple finishing touches, and call him done. Alright, so we are back, and I thought we had some finishing touches to do, but uh, no, we're just done with this guy. So, right about now, you should be seeing some pictures of him all done. I'll have finished his base by that point, and I'll put his little two little helpers next to him. Uh, if you like this video, please feel free to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you for the next Leviathan video.